American Defense College. Really thank you for your Your leadership at IADC has been absolutely critical to our hemispheric security. You're not just building the next generation of leaders. In our very definition of what a modern 21st century military looks like. Now, I would also like to thank all of the seminar participants. I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts, and I assure you there will be time for your questions after my remarks. I'm particularly interested in hearing what you have learned and what uh, has struck you over the last couple of days. I will keep my remarks short, um, but uh, when the time comes for questions, happy to take any questions you may have either about uh, the topic of this conference or the work that U.S. Southern Command does throughout the region. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm here. Some of you may, in fact, know this is the third consecutive year that I have asked to speak at this specific conference. Now, why is that? Simply put, gender integration is an issue that I care very deeply about, both professionally and personally. Over four decades ago, in 1974, I first raised my right hand and I swore an oath as a midshipman to lead a life of service and honor. I've seen how far that we have come in Annapolis, first integrated. 55 women graduated from that first class, and they entered a military that was less than now, The most diplomatic thing that I can say is that we did an extraordinarily poor job of integrating those first classes of women. I know that many of those women would use much stronger language in order to describe their experience. Fundamentally and collectively, we failed our responsibilities as leaders and our obligations as trusted teammates. And I was part of that. But eventually, things began to improve, and we began to do better. I'd like to think that I was a part of that, too. As a destroyer commanding officer, integrating women into warships and into combat squadrons. blazed trails, broke ceilings, and paved the way for many of you who are sitting here today. Today, across all branches of militaries and in nations all around the world, women are performing their duties with honor, with professionalism, and with competence in every imaginable role. I'm proud and I'm humbled to serve alongside you and I'm honored to speak at an event like this. Now, although we've come far, and perhaps some have come farther than others, the complex global security situation brings an urgency to press effective gender integration. As junior officers, you'll face a world unlike any that we have seen before. Our security environment today is more complex, and more unpredictable and far more volatile. You will serve in a wide spectrum of missions across a wide range of conditions. You will come into contact with incredibly diverse populations and environments. Even peacekeeping has changed. Two thirds are currently serving in active conflict zones. Thanks to borderless challenges like criminal networks and violent extremism, the line between faster than we ever thought possible. This new world 
comes with new demands on our militaries and on us as service members, as leaders, and most importantly, as teammates. The missions in which you will serve will deeper cohesion, better and unbreakable trust. And trust is the central pillar of combat effectiveness. It's the essential core of unit cohesion, the principle that binds us together and underpins our commitment to leaders and to one another. We can only operate at the speed of trust. Ultimately, trust really comes down to this. Trust is knowing that you who bring the best set of characteristics and competencies to the fight. Trust is knowing that you have teammates who have your back and have the skills to get the mission done, who each bring unique strengths and perspectives that, when combined, create the most competent, capable, and effective team. Ultimately, this is why gender integration remains so important. We've seen that military teams that integrate fully qualified, capable women into the full spectrum of military operations directly improve their operational effectiveness. In Afghanistan, integrated teams help build trust with local populations operational environment for us and for our coalition forces. In Africa, integrated peacekeeping units are better able to cross most of you already know. Operational effectiveness depends on more than just an accumulation of our military capabilities. Operational effectiveness lies in accepting and in valuing differences as strengths. When we, when we respect different opinions, we build trust and mutual confidence with people all around us. When we aggressively pursue, including perspectives outside our own boundaries, instead of staying inside our comfort zone, we create unacceptable asymmetric challenges to our adversaries, and we improve our situational awareness and our strategic posture. Ultimately, we are far more effective at, at achieving the security objectives assigned to us by our governments, but more importantly, expected of us by our people. But more broadly, there's also a compelling body of research outside the military tend to be more creative and more innovative. As we are more likely to introduce radical new innovations to the market. And without question, if we want to succeed in the 21st century security environment, we're going to need the most creative and innovative teams possible. Building these types of teams involves tapping the full talent, initiative, and potential of all of our men and women. And let me be clear, integration isn't something that is simply nice to do. This isn't about checking a box or meeting a quota or satisfying some popular agenda. This is about building and fielding the best possible teams, the teams that we need to compete and to win in complex environments. And the only criteria for joining that team our competence and character. Size and physical strength alone do not make the soldier. Instead, it's the strength of will and the indomitable spirit that makes warriors of all shapes. For me, this is what makes gender integration an imperative for any modern military, just like respect for human rights and the establishment of capable non-commissioned officers' corps. Gender integration makes for stronger, more resilient, and more effective teams, and stronger, more resilient, and more effective militaries. As, now, before I would like, as future leaders, you may come across certain challenges related to the issues of gender integration. When we talk about this issue, and especially about the issue of standards, some countries and some cultures or aren't suited, either physically, mentally, or emotionally, to serve. 
And while women do face some unique demands when it comes to personal choices about family and the like, the truth is every military family faces unique challenges. Some cultures insist in believing that women who serve have to be different. They have to renounce their femininity in order to succeed. And that somehow that's a bad thing. I'm here to tell each and every one of you, people who say that completely miss the point. They're wrong. It's simple. We all recognize that men who choose a life of service, a commitment that these men are fundamentally different from the vast majority of their civilian peers. So why should our expectations be any different for women who choose to serve, for anyone for that matter who chooses to serve? Women and men who serve are different. Those of us who answer the call are of a different cut and caliber. We make different choices. We're driven by different motivations. It's different for anyone who puts on a uniform, who serves in the service of their country. What's different is what's in their heart. How strong is their spirit? How committed is their character? Male or female, we all swear an oath to join because we love our countries, we want a better future for our families and for our citizens. This difference is precisely, despite differences in rank, service, gender, or race, and this is why we trust each other as brothers and sisters in arms. So I urge everyone in this seminar, focus on that better service, on that better future that we all dream of. Focus on how to become the most airman, marine that you can possibly be. Your teams, your militaries will be better for it. Each of you will demonstrate in attitude and in action that you represent a professional force that mirrors your respective societies, a force that is ready and able to meet any challenges any mission, anywhere. You must be the change agents. You have an incredible opportunity before you to change organizations within your countries and to change perspectives all around the world. You can change perspectives, not just about the role of women, but about the role of mutual respect and professionalism within all of our military teams. Imagine what a young Somali girl must think when she sees proud and competent female soldiers patrolling the streets of Mogadishu, keeping the local population stations in an infantry division, being treated not just as a peer, but as a valued member of an integrated and effective team. And see it, someday maybe she can be it. All of you as young officers aren't just pioneers of a new generation. You are pioneers of a generation of warriors, of peacekeepers, and you're pioneers of a new generation of leaders who will change your countries and the world for the better. I envy every single one of you. I wish you all good luck, Godspeed. The rest of us are counting on you to get it right. Thank you very much, and I welcome your questions. assured this was not a shy group. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. I am a lieutenant colonel from the Professional Reserve Forces of Columbia. Um, what would you recommend to do to make that integration that you talk about? 